if I have something coming up that's bringing me out of my comfort zone, from that day on, I will think about that and like harp on it and let it eat me alive until the day it happens. Because it can, it can consume me to the point where I'm not focusing on like what's happening to me that day or in that moment. I'm just worried about like what's going to happen in the future. Um, so that's really stressful. I know that I live a very fortunate lifestyle. I know that I might not have some of the daily struggles that some people might have. I have a really great family. I have a wonderful job. I'm stable financially. I'm very blessed and fortunate. It doesn't mean that I don't have crippling anxiety. A lot of my anticipatory anxiety is like honing in or focusing almost too much on one thing that might bring me out of my comfort zone and just like, not being able to get it out of my head until it actually happens. I, for example, really, really don't like public speaking. Like, it makes me really nervous and uncomfortable. But then there's moments in my life, um, you know, as a public figure that I do have to kind of be in that position. It's just so many eyeballs looking at you at one time. I've messed up before, too. And it does, and you know, people still bring it up to this day. Like, it's just so embarrassing, you know what I mean? You're just like, oh my God, like, how could I have messed up that bad? It still is never gonna be like something that I'm super stoked on. It will always make me nervous. Anticipatory anxiety is when you are feeling anxious about something that hasn't happened yet and may never happen. So you're anticipating that something catastrophic or disastrous is going mm -hmm. to happen. Oh my God, that's me. <laughs> that's literally me. How, how does it's it like happen for you? It's like all I think about. I mean, I'm like, I'm like doomsday. Like I like literally start to think about like the worst possible thing that like could happen or like. The thing about anticipatory anxiety is people feel like it protects me to feel like I know what's going to happen. And eventually something bad will happen because it just does in right, life. Right. Um, but really what it is, it's kind of a hypervigilance. It's always being worried that mm -hmm. the other shoe is going to drop. Right and it's always a negative view of the future. It's right. never like anticipating something good, right. if you notice right, that. Right, right, right. Um, and so it comes out in all kinds of contexts. It comes out in work, like if someone has a presentation at work, they come up with all these ways that it's going mm. to go yeah. badly. Yeah. Or they're in a relationship and their boyfriend or girlfriend comes home and they're kind of distant and they immediately go to, this person's gonna break up with mm. me. Yeah. As opposed to maybe that person just had a bad day at right. work. Right. But they, they construct these stories in their minds right. about what it means. So they, they add meaning to something that isn't actually there. I feel like my version of anticipatory anxiety might not be the worst, it might not be that bad, um, but how bad can it get? When do you know that someone might need help or mm -hmm. it might get to a point that it's crippling? Some anticipatory anxiety is healthy. So you're going into a new experience, like you're taking a test or you're going into an interview. You wanna have that adrenaline going, right. you wanna be focused and on your game, but where it starts to be problematic is when it cripples you, mm -hmm. when it interferes with your functioning. So some people will say, I can't go to a party because I'm so worried. Afraid or I of can't, this or that, yeah. Yes, or I can't go interview for that job, or I can't go on that date because I get too anxious. So it's really interfering with your day-to-day -day functioning. When you've experienced anticipatory anxiety, how do you know that you're having it? Do you feel it in your body? What happens for you? For example, I don't like public speaking very much. The moment that I you know, schedule it and I know it's happening, to the moment it actually happens, like I will think about it constantly and it'll just like eat me alive. Like I won't be able to forget about it. And the day I'm getting ready to go, I just have like, so much anxiety, like it feels like my blood is like boiling and I'm just like about, I'm like shaking, I like, my mouth is dry, like. It can feel like a panic attack mm -hmm. sometimes. Definitely. And then if someone has a panic attack, what happens is they worry they're gonna have another, so they end up feeling like, I'm so worried that I'm gonna have another panic attack that they end up having a panic attack about the fact that they might have another panic attack. Right. And that's what's so insidious about anxiety. Right.
I think another thing that happens is people are perfectionists. Mm. And if you feel like there's no room for error, you're going to feel really anxious about it. That's and, me. <laughs> and, and, and you, you think that everyone's going to notice mm -hmm. that you made the mistake. Yeah, exactly. Right? So yeah. no one really notices, but you think everyone's really examining you that way. So a lot of people who are perfectionistic tend to have a lot of anxiety around public appearances. Yeah, I'm a big perfectionist. Yeah. I like never want to mess up. I want to do everything perfect. Right. And so I would say to somebody like that in therapy, so what's the worst that can happen if you're up there and you, you know, don't do something perfectly? I guess like if you mess up enough that people notice, they just make fun of you. <laughs> That's the worst that can happen. See, I think it shows that you're human. We have some audience questions because I really wanted to bring the audience into this. Sure. How do you prevent letting your mind wander into anticipation anxiety? Staying present. So if you notice that you're in the future or you're in the past, um, to really ground yourself. And there are a lot of grounding exercises that people can do to stay present. And one of them is called the 54321, um, which that? is you notice like five things that you can see right now. Okay. Um, four things that you can hear right now, okay. three things that you can feel right now, two things that you can, um, you know, smell right now, yeah. one thing that you can um, taste. taste. There you go. You go through the senses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. And it really brings you into the present because you have to really notice. Yeah. Um, all right. Next question. Does anxiety cause memory loss issues? I've never heard that question before. Well, that's actually a great question because when we're anxious, we secrete stress hormones. Right. And when you have chronic oversecretion of stress hormones, it can affect your memory and it can affect your brain. <gasps> oh my God. Not I, to make you more anxious. I had no idea. And honestly, I think that makes so much sense. My memory is terrible and my stress levels are so high. <laughs> that is so interesting. I had no idea. Wow. I've been asking all the professionals that I've been speaking with just some advice or, or tips that, you know, viewers can apply to their lives and take home with them. There are so many ways that people can manage their anxiety and some things that they can do on their own have to do partly with some grounding exercises. So one of them we talked about earlier, the 54321. Yeah. Another one is you can go to the freezer, grab some ice and put ice in your hands. Okay. And what that does is when you're spinning, it redirects all of that senses energy, right? Your yeah. senses to the cold yeah. on your hands. Yeah. And you rub the ice between your hands. And it takes you right out of where you were because now your whole body is focused on there's something very, very cold right. in my hands. I love that. Well, thank you so much. This my has pleasure. been awesome. Yeah. I appreciate your advice. I appreciate all the information. I think this is really helpful and I learned stuff today. So that's awesome. I appreciate you. And thank you so much for talking about this because I think that a lot of people can relate to all of the experiences that you have in their own lives. Yeah. Well, thank you. There's been so many situations where I've had to kind of like face fears or face situations like that. And like, honestly, like own all that anxiety. Like you just have to do it to not only grow as a person, but like become a better person and, you know, show that you care about a situation. After this whole series, I've really come to the conclusion that I want to be more present, that I just want to like actually really, really try to be as present as I possibly can. It's an awesome feeling when you hear a professional talking about something that's so similar to your situation. It's a great way to not feel alone in it all. So I hope that, I think that's the main thing I'd love for people to take away from it. Thank you.